Okay, rain or shine, the gospel must be preached. Rain or shine. It doesn't have to be to a crowd. It can be to one person. It can be to two people. It can be to three people. It doesn't matter. The gospel must be preached. The gospel must go on. Because the gospel message is very important. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, that you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of Christ. When the word of God is preached, and people hear the word of God, that is how God says in his word, he saves them. That is how we receive the new birth. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, these very important words. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. This is Peter speaking to the Christians that he wrote to that were scattered abroad throughout uh, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who are elected of God. He said to them, to the Christians, that the word of God is what caused you to be born again. And verse 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we all know in John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The Bible says that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You have to be born of the Spirit in order for you to be saved, in order for you to see the kingdom of God. If you are not born again, then you're not going to go to heaven. And that's what the Bible says. If you're not born again, you're not going to go to heaven. That's what the Bible says. And who is in control of the new birth? Is it you or is it God? The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as have received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God is the one who gives the new birth. In theology, we call it regeneration. In theology, we call it regeneration. You have to be regenerated by God. You have to be changed by God. That's what the Bible says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's the new birth. When God makes you a new person, when God transforms your heart, when God transforms your soul, when God makes you his child, when God adopts you out of the kingdom of darkness, that is the new birth. And unless you're born again, you are not going to see the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. And nowadays you ask people, if you die right now, where will you go? They will tell you without hesitation, I'm going to heaven. And then you ask them, what is your life like? Are you a Christian? No, I'm not. Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Do you drink alcohol and get drunk every night? Yes, I do. Do you fornicate? Yes, I do. But yet you're going to heaven. But yet, when you die, God's going to accept you. This is a false God. This is a false God. The God of the Bible says in Exodus chapter 34, verse 7, God will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. So how is it that you can live however you want and die and God will accept you? No such thing. But because we don't know the God of the Bible, we don't know God. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 8, My people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2, It is not good to be without knowledge. What knowledge is this talking about? It's talking about the knowledge of God. It is not good to be without knowledge. That's what the Bible says. And people who don't know the Bible, they don't know the Word of God, they come to some conclusions that the Bible does not teach. For example, you hear the saying that God hears the prayers of everyone. You hear people say that God hears the prayers of everyone. The Bible says 
In John chapter 9, verse 31, God does not hear the prayers of sinners. He does not hear the prayers of sinners. And I, I, and I can say this again with no apology. I don't care how anybody feels, what anybody thinks. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Anybody who lives in sin, lives in rebellion to God, lives in hatred toward God, anybody who's a friend of the world, who is an enemy of God, God does not hear your prayer. Doesn't matter how you feel. Doesn't matter what you think. Doesn't matter what your experiences are. If you are not God's child, if you are not a Christian, if you are not a saint, you can go on your knees from now until kingdom come. God does not hear your prayer. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible teaches. And I understand that what I am doing to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel is to make enemies. To preach the gospel is to create enemies. Because the gospel message, which comes with the gospel command, it confronts your sin. It confronts your sin and it says to you, repent of your sin. It confronts your sin and it tells you to repent. And anybody who preaches the gospel will have enemies. But I don't care if everybody in Sandy Bay hates me. I don't care. I'll be hated for the gospel. I don't care how anybody feels. The Bible says in John chapter 7, verse 7, that Jesus Christ was hated because he confesses to the world that their deeds are evil. When you say to the world that their deeds are evil, the world hates you. When you look at a man who is not married when he's having sex with multiple women. He hates you. When you look at a man who's stealing money from men overseas, scammers, thieves, when you tell them to repent, they hate you. When you look at young men who love to smoke weed and you tell them, stop smoking weed, they hate you. Because when you preach the gospel, you will be hated by the world. You will be hated by the world because you are saying that every other religion in the world is wrong and Christianity is right. You are saying that every other perspective in the world is wrong and Christianity is right. You are saying that no other way leads to God. You're saying that no other way is their salvation. You are saying that only Christ can save. Only Christ can save. Buddha cannot save. Hinduism cannot save. Silasi the first cannot save. LNG White cannot save. For those of you who follow LNG White, LNG White cannot save you. Her teachings cannot save you. LNG White started the cult of Seventy Adventism who follow her. <clears throat> and only the Seventh-day Adventists who don't follow LNG White's teachings may go to heaven. But all the rest who follow Ellen G. White are going to hell. And that's true. That's fact. The Bible says that if a prophet comes to you and preaches something to you that is not of God, you are not to accept that prophet. And Ellen G. White, in her writings, contradicts the Bible multiple times. But when you tell the Adventists these things, they will shun you. They will curse you out. They will call you a madman. They will call you names. And they will not go and check for themselves. And the Seventh-day Adventist pastors, if one of them speaks out against Ellen G. White, they are thrown out of the church. But nobody wonders. Nobody looks at these things. Nobody says to themselves, why can't anyone speak against this woman? Nobody asks this question. But the Bible says that whoever speaks apart from the Word of God, there is no light in them. No light in them. No light. And the gospel message is this. God sent the Son into the world to save sinners. God sent the Son into the world to save sinners. If you feel like you're not a sinner, Christ did not come for you. If you feel like you are self-righteous, Christ did not come for you. The Bible says that Christ came into the world to save sinners. 
The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible also says that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The only way that you can have eternal life is in Christ Jesus. The only way that you can live, the only way that you can feel the presence of God in heaven when you die is in Christ Jesus. If you are not a Christian, you are in danger. If you are not a Christian, you have the wrath of God abiding on you. If you are not a Christian, the Bible calls you a child of Satan, a child of the devil. Because many of you were taught, many of you were told, I don't know by who, but maybe by pastors, that everybody is a child of God. And that is a lie from the kingdom of darkness. Not everyone is a child of God. Not everyone is a child of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, you have to be given the right to be called a child of God. Not everyone's a child of God. The Bible says that those who are born again are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit are children of God. Those who have the Spirit in them are children of God. And those who do not they are children of the devil. The Bible says these words in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. By this we know the children of God and the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. That's what the Bible says. Look at your life. Look at your life. Are you one who practices righteousness? Do you live a life that people can look at you and say you are a Christian? Can people look at you and say you are a man of God? Can people look at you and say that you are a child of God? Because if they cannot, then you are a child of Satan. Yasiatan pitni. And I can say it with patwa. Siatan pitni. And you can feel like you are God's child from now until kingdom come. Your feelings do not validate truth. How you feel does not validate truth. The truth is this. If you don't follow God, you are following the devil. The truth is this. Whoever is not with Christ is against Christ. The truth is this. If you are a sinner, God does not hear your prayer. With those who he has caused to be born again, who live a life of righteousness, they are called saints. The Bible never calls a child of God a sinner. If you disagree with me, show me a verse. If anybody disagrees with me, show me a verse. Nowhere in the Bible does it call a Christian a sinner. Because when God saves you, he changes you into a saint. And the saint is somebody who fights against sin. You don't walk hand in hand with sin. You don't live a life of sin. You will have sinful actions, but you will not have a sinful life. And that is very different. Very different. Those who live in sin are children of the devil. Those who live a life of sin are children of the devil. All you have to do is look at your life. Do you wake up every day? and smoke weed? Do you wake up every day and wonder when's the next drink to go to a bar and get drunk? Do you wake up every day beside a woman who's not your wife? Do you wake up every day beside a man who's not your husband after having sex the night before? And do you feel any guilt about these things? Do you steal? Because in Jamaica, we have scamming. We have scammers. We have people who call those overseas and thief their money. Thief! You are a thief! And I'm not afraid to say it to anybody. Stealing is wrong. Stealing is wrong. I'm not here to make anybody feel good about themselves. 
Yeah, pastors steal too, but not this one. I'm not down. I'm not, I don't come down here to make anybody feel good about themselves. You all need to know that God's wrath abides on you. And you could die at any moment. You could die today. You could die in five minutes. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to uplift your soul. I'm not a motivational speaker like some of these false preachers and false pastors. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is this. If you do not repent of your sin, you will perish when you die. You will go to hell when you die. You will face God in judgment when you die. Do not believe the lie that you can come as you are. Do not believe the lie that when you die in your sin, God will accept you. No such thing. That's a lie. Anybody who told you that lied to you. And if you believe that, you are believing a lie. People are saying that God is love, 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 and that's all He is. He loves you. He loves you. Why do you need to repent? Why do you need to, to, to pray? Why do you need to confess Jesus Christ as Lord? If He already loves you, why do you need to repent? What difference does it make if God already loves you? But what the Bible actually says is this. Psalm chapter 5, verse 5. Reading for verse 4. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. No evil dwells with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all who do iniquity. You destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord hates the man of bloodshed and deceit. Those who don't read their Bibles find these verses shocking. Because we have in the word of God... God saying in his word, he hates the man of bloodshed and deceit. We always hear God loves the sinner and hates the sin. But where did a pastor ever show you a verse that said that? Where? Nowhere. We're told that the Bible says that, that, that you are to come as you are. Show where in the Bible you can find the words come as you are. Nowhere. Nowhere. And these things are so easily, easily refutable. These things are so easily refutable. You can refute these things so easily because they're not true. They're not biblical. They're not of God's word. God says he will judge the wicked. God says he will not let the guilty go unpunished. And God says in his word that he hates those who continue in sin. The man who sheds blood, the man who lives a deceitful life, the man who lies. The Bible says that God abhors him. God hates him. The word abhor is what is used there. The word abhor. And to abhor something is to not only hate it, but it is also to feel disgusted about it. And God's word is clear about this. God's word is clear. God's word is clear. Anybody can read God's word. And understand the gospel. Anybody can preach. What? So both of you are Christians. Both of you are Christians, right? Well, the two of you know yourselves. If you're not a Christian, then you're not a prophet. Two of you know yourselves. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. The Bible says, repent of your sins and each of you be baptized. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Repent of your sins and be baptized. That's what the Bible says. Baptism does not save you. Baptism does not save you. Do not get me wrong. 
If you say that you are a Christian, if you repent of your sins and trust in Christ, and then you live a life of obedience, you are going to get baptized. But let's say for the sake of argument that on your way to be baptized, you die. On your way to go into the water, something happens and you die. Do you go to hell or do you go to heaven? You're going to heaven. If you die before you get to the water, you're going to heaven because you were in the path of obedience. But if, but if you say that you're a Christian and you don't get baptized, you're being a disobedient person and you're not a Christian. The Bible says you know them by their fruits. If you're, if you're a Rasta and you worship Rasta, uh, uh, Selassie, you're going to hell, man. You're going to hell. Selassie died August 27, 1975, and he's still dead. Selassie died, and he's still dead. Selassie was eaten by worms. He's dead. And you worship a dead man. You need to repent of your sin. No. They're going to hell too. Anybody who worships a man is going to hell. For anybody who can hear my voice, anybody who worships Selassie the first, because he's not Selassie, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Selassie the first. The I that you think is an I is the Roman numeral one. It's Selassie the first. Anybody who worships that man is going to hell. Repent of your sins and trust in Christ. The Bible says in Luke chapter 13 verse 3 and 5, Unless you repent, you will all perish. And that's the truth. The Bible says in John 3 16 that those who believe in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe in Christ, if you repent of your sins, you will have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. But your life has to show that you have truly repented. You can't say that you repent and then every day you get up and you suck on a weed stick. Weed and medicine. Weed and medicine, herb. Where put this in herb? Where do you meditate? Where do you meditate?